As detailed in my video at the start of the year, not a huge amount was confirmed in terms of 60th anniversary merchandise. I didn't suspect this would remain the case for long. The 007 store continued to churn out their usual mix of very high-end and more affordable items. Most of what was released had a 60th anniversary logo put on it to tie it in, but some did make use of the Dr. No opening title's dot design, which made a comeback in No Time to Die, and has featured heavily within the design of merchandise ever since. These coloured dots featured on a Dr. No tote bag, a Penfold golf tool set, the box design for the Dr. No steelbook set, on the packaging for the Perth Mint 60th anniversary coins, within the design of the next super expensive backgammon set, in the design of the latest range of pricey globe trotter cases, and on the Dr. No pocket square, previously released in last year's advent calendar and now being sold for the princely sum of £40. And also, in case you missed it, you can also go all out and buy a bottle of Bollinger decked out in the dots design within a dotted globe trotter case for just £7,200. Dr. No naturally featured a lot in new releases, as well as the dotted items mentioned above. We also got a Dr. No metal lunchbox and a Dr. No poster tea towel. Dr. No was also re-released on Blu-ray in a limited edition steelbook box set, complete with art book, postcards and cardboard origami dragon tank. Those expecting a 4K release of the films were left very disappointed, with no announcement having yet been made, despite the prints being out there, as this year's cinema re-releases demonstrated. What was released was a further range of nine James Bond steelbooks, continuing the opening titles designs introduced in the 2015 release. This left collectors with a bit of a dilemma as to whether they wanted to shell out another £18 per film for the same old Blu-ray to build on from the set that was started some years ago, when 4K releases must soon be around the corner. Corgi have been remarkably quiet on the anniversary front this year, unsurprising as they have never really been the best at the timing of their releases. They've continued with their already planned timetable of the Lotus Esprit re-release to tie in with the Spy Loved Me anniversary and the previously cancelled Triumph Scrambler bike, which is still destined for release at some point this year. Made by Corky, but commissioned by the Corgi Model Club, a very accurate replica of the original 261 Aston Martin DB5 is available to buy, which is better than any anniversary edition Corgi themselves have released in the past. To fill the toy car gap, Hong Kong company Motomax have released a range of Bond cars, complete with 60th branding. They're not to the quality of Corgi, but it's nice to see different cars being produced in a larger format, with several cars clearly influenced by a deal they must have struck with Ford. The Chevy Bel Air from Dr. No also gets a larger scale release, a car that hasn't been available in model format very often. Johnny Lightning also released a few new, seemingly random cars, complete with 60th branding, amongst other unrelated releases. The Lotus Esprit S3, the Ford Ranch Wagon, the AMC Hornet, the Ford Mustang, and one that makes a bit more sense, the Sunbeam Alpine. An array of different coloured, uninspiringly designed t-shirts were also released with a simple gumbrow design. T-shirts were also released following the Sound of 007 concert, which consisted of the poster being plastered onto a black or white t-shirt. Most official Bond t-shirts are very uninspiring, and they could really learn lessons from more unofficial creations. A catalogue was also available to purchase detailing the lots in the Christie's auctions, and the programme produced for the concert was made available for those unable to attend in person. Alongside the above, a set of anniversary prints produced by Pyramid Posters was also made available in limited numbers, similar to what they produced for the 50th anniversary, and a Bond in Motion poster for the collection featuring at the Peterson Automotive Museum features the anniversary branding. In the more premium market, we had the previously mentioned very limited bottle of Bollinger, the £5,000 backgammon set, and numerous pieces of luggage. If you can't afford Globetrotter's latest array of luggage, fear not, as you can add that touch of bond with these leather luggage stickers, two for only £100. Although still somewhat cheaper, but still expensive for what they are, a box set of London Sock Exchange socks was also released, along with various other items of clothing, including a Dr. No inspired bathrobe, toweling polo shirts, and a £245 pair of swim shorts featuring the Dr. No gun barrel sequence. Numerous Bond-inspired sunglasses are also tagged under 60th anniversary on the 007 store website. Now sold out, famous cuddly bear makers Stife released a special Bond bear in tuxedo, and the Perth Mint continued to release special coins featuring the 60th logo and the Bond family crest. 
Their most recent release is a 5 ounce gold coin complete with white diamonds with a limited edition of 60 coins. Yours for just £22,000. Who said there was a cost of living crisis? Golf company Penfold, made famous by Goldfinger, have continued their association with Bond by releasing a golf pouch, a bag and a golf tool set. With the 007 store keen to partner with other premium brands and vaguely linking with the 60th anniversary, you can get a Dr No inspired Trilby hat or the James Bond 60 hat with no obvious links to Bond from Lock & Co, a phone holster or leather laptop bag from Connolly, headphones in a similar colour to Bond's Dr No suit from Bowers & Wilkins or an array of bags and boots from skiing brand Bogner. Unavailable to buy shortly after they were released, the Macallan whisky makers produced exclusive bottles and packaging for every decade of Bond. Buyers had to be entered into a ballot to stand a chance of getting a bottle. If you're feeling particularly flush, live in the US and have a games room to fill, you can buy one of two newly produced James Bond pinball machines. All in all, there's been plenty for collectors to buy in this anniversary year, at various different price points. I still don't like the transition of anything Bond-related moving into the premium market, considering even the more affordable items are still somewhat expensive. 15 quid for a tea towel, anyone? But this is something I'll be touching upon in a future video. The lack of 4K release was disappointing, and it would have been nice to have seen some additional anniversary Funko Pops, or in addition to the Playmobil or Lego sets. Is there anything you were really hoping to see released this year? Let me know in the comments below. And as always... Thanks for watching.